Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 19.4 populations. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For this lesson you need to describe the terms population, community and ecosystem, identify factors that affect rate of population growth and identify the phases of the sigmoid curve of population growth. For extended you also need to explain the factors factors that lead to each phase in the sigmoid curve. A population is a group of organisms of one species living in the same area at the same time. For example, we might refer to a population of water lilies in a pond or a population of lions in a national park. A community is made up of all the populations of different species living in a given habitat or ecosystem. For example, a forest community might include populations of trees, birds, insects, mammals and flowering plants. An ecosystem is a larger scale system that comprises both the community of living organisms and their physical environment. For example, the coral reef ecosystem includes coral colonies, fish, algae, crustacea and other organisms that interact with the physical elements of the reef structure, water clarity and currents, dissolved oxygen and sunlight. Within an ecosystem, population numbers are constantly changing due to factors like food supply, competition, predation and disease. So a good food supply increases the chances that organisms will survive and reproduce, while a shortage of food can lead to starvation and death. Competition for resources like food, water, sunlight and territory may restrict a population's growth as many organisms are unable to get what they need, while a lack of competition enables a greater proportion of organisms to survive and reproduce. For example, excessive competition between owls and foxes for a common food source like mice means that neither population has enough food to expand. Diseases that spread easily from one individual to another can reduce population sizes dramatically. For example, malaria reportedly kills hundreds of thousands of people each year and fungal diseases infect entire populations of fruit trees. Finally, most populations are directly affected by predation. All other factors aside, a plant or animal's population will increase whenever predator numbers fall and decrease when predator numbers rise. Now you need to be able to interpret graphs or diagrams of population growth, so let's take a look at this last point in context. So the population size of a predator tends to lag behind that of its prey. In this example, as the rabbit population increases, foxes have more to eat and so, after a period of time, their population goes up as well. However, as fox numbers rise, so does rate of predation, meaning eventually rabbit numbers start to decline. This causes fox numbers to go down as well, which allows the rabbit population to grow again, and so on. Finally, you need to identify the different phases in the sigmoid curve of population growth. So the sigmoid curve, also known as an S-shaped curve, depicts the growth of a population of a species in an environment with limited resources. We could use the example of bacteria on a petri dish or yeast cells in a sugar solution. There are four phases to the sigmoid curve. Firstly, a period of slow growth called the lag phase. Next, a period of rapid growth called the exponential or log phase. Then the stationary phase, where the size of the population remains constant. And finally, the death phase, where population numbers fall. Now that's everything you need to know for core, but for extended you also need to explain the factors that lead to each of the four phases. We'll use the example of a population of bacteria, which doubles in number with each generation. In the lag phase, the population is small, meaning each doubling results in a relatively small increase in number. However, continued doubling produces a logarithmic growth rate, meaning that as the population expands and enters the exponential phase, each doubling results in a far greater increase in number. For example, when a population of four doubles, it has little or no impact on its habitat. However, when a population of a thousand doubles, it puts far more strain on the habitat's resources and dramatically increases competition for food and space. Now, as the population enters the stationary phase, limiting factors come into play. The food supply may no longer be sufficient to support further expansion, diseases may spread more easily due to overcrowding, or waste products may accumulate. That inhibit growth. For example, alcohol that's released as a byproduct of anaerobic respiration in yeast kills yeast when concentrations get too high. Eventually, the population enters the death phase, where mortality rate exceeds rate of reproduction and population numbers begin to fall. 
Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 19.4, populations. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 20.1, food supply.